the same as you. We're exactly the same as you. We, um, all right, we've got one difference, right? We've um, had an orchidectomy, which means we've got no testicles. Um, some of us have had breast implants, right? The only difference is that we still have a small penis, right? That's the only difference, so we're thrown in. When I met Sharon and Cheryl, the first thing they asked me was if they could borrow my lipstick, because as transsexuals, they're not allowed to have any makeup of their own. And as for interviewing two people who dressed and looked like women in an all-male prison can only be described as bizarre. I got charged with stealing, assault and goods in custody, which I beat in court. What I beat all the charges. I'm in for um, seven counts of armed robbery to support a heroin habit when I was out. Before I got released from jail on my last flagon, I was at the MRP. Now that used to be all the transsexuals jail. Like there wasn't all transsexuals there, but um, that's where they used to house all us girls, right? Well, um, I used to be there all the time, wasn't I, Chef? Yeah. I was there all the time and just not one bit of trouble. The guys just thoroughly respect the girls. My boyfriend was recently released. He comes out and visits me, but before he was released, we were in a two-out cell, in this actual cell now, and um, we were having sex constantly together, you know, and I'm not afraid to admit it, you know, and he's still with me now and still comes out and visits me. Do people try to have sex with you? Um, oh, occasionally you get, get asked, you know, no, somebody you will come up. How about it, Sharon, or... You know, it's usually the nice set of tits there, or, you know, you know, but they'll slap you on the backside and be say, be up there later. Yeah, but you just, you know, you don't, something like that. You don't be nasty to them. Like, I'd just say, oh, yeah, sweet, and just walk, just shrug it and walk away, you know. You know, people turn around and say, oh, what's my chances? Yeah, I'd say, I'd say it like this, Buckley's and no. You got two, love. You got two? Yeah, that's it, you got two, Buckley's and no. Now, on your bike. It's only a quarter past four in the afternoon and dinner is being served. Within half an hour, before the sun has set, these men will be locked away. A jail wing is an eerie place at night. How people can ever contemplate escape with an image like this. It looked to me like a submarine, airtight. The prisoners stay like this for 17 hours of every day. One prisoner told me if you're serving a 12-month sentence, nine months are spent like this. It is dangerous, yes. It's a dangerous occupation. It's stressful. Uh, and I feel that uh, every day could be a danger in a jail. But you live with that? We live with it. I've lived with it as a game. I said for 30 years, so I've lived with it. I meet prisoners outside. I've seen prisoners outside in society. They don't worry me. I don't worry them. I talk to them. Uh, I've met them at football matches, seen them at football matches, and I talk to them. They talk to me, and that's it. That's it, finishing. I don't associate with them, of course. The things that we have to put up with is being physically and verbally abused, assaults on prison officers. There are a lot more assaults on prison officers than there were several years ago. It's all very well for the public to say, hang them and, you know, shoot them, which happens in emotional times. It's easy to say that, but the majority of prisoners are, are just want to do their time. It's only a small minority that cause the problems. It's dangerous, but for some prisoners, illegal pastimes are worth the risk. Home brews are everywhere in jail. Heroin can be bought in jail too, but we heard stories of men using syringes that were over 12 months old. Then there's sex. It's no longer illegal, but it's dangerous. You now, after seven and a half years, you know, I've had a few homosexual relationships whilst being inside. Um, but I think that's another thing that, that when you're on the outside, you don't think about homosexuality. Inside, it's most of time it's a it's a relief what about companionship well that's something you've got to miss out on you know there's plenty of this poofs and all that sort of thing here but you know it's uh, it's not down my alley that doesn't you can either be straight or you've got to you know bend the rules to suit the suit the time what about the home brews? who knows about them oh yeah, there's plenty of it how do you make them well ask stilly that's his nickname still 
He knows. He knows more about it. Oh. I haven't made any for about three months now because it was getting a bit hot. All you, the only ingredients you use for uh, making home brew is just oranges, sugar, and veggie mites saturates. You leave it down for four days just and you if get you want drunk. <laughs> Shut up. Four days if you want a mild brew. If you want just pure alcohol, leave it down for seven days. You'll find the people that drink it, you won't notice them. Like, there might be three of them, and we might come into my cellar, another mate of mine, and we'll have a brew, and we'll get into it, knock it over, tell a few lies to each other, and then about up past nine will be time to get locked up. They're being smart. The other fella, he just goes from here to his cell. You know, and then settle down for the night. Ron comes to the officers, check out the thing. Right, boys? Yeah. Bang. Nothing's noticed. If I went in the outside and I started, like, put me home bruise down. I think I'd put the paint stripper firm out of business. Yeah. Oh, it just strips the <laughs> lining out of your guts. It's very easy to look at the jail system as an outsider, but very hard to understand the complexities from within. On our third day at Long Bay, a group of powerful prisoners decided they didn't like the angle of our story and tried to censor what we could and couldn't film. Does that mean you're the heavies in here? No, no, no. Correction. Uh, the word heavy do not exist in the system. I mean, it is the term used by the media to class representative guys like us that's interested in sports as well as other local issues. But other prisoners, especially the ones in strict protection, see them very differently. Who runs the jail in there? Who runs it? Mm. Well, um, there's, there's livers and that out there. You know, they've got, they got nothing to lose. Like, they, like we've, got, we've just got a new remission system now. They're not under that. So they, 10 days a month, remission means nothing to them because they don't get it. But th are there any main people in there who you know who run there's it in there? There's some big names, yeah. Who? Well, like, I can't really say that. Why not? Well, <laughs> that's, that's part of the prison's code of ethics. The guys that are there in one wing on protection have a great imagination, able to concoct stories. Every jail's got, got its gangsters, you know, what, what most people call plastic gangsters, yeah. They call them what? Plastic gangsters. I would say that that uh, statement that the uh, jail is run by gangsters is only a myth. There is an established hierarchy uh, in the central industrial prison as there are in other prisons and as there, there is in society and elsewhere. The difference there uh, within the prison is that the, uh, the top of the hierarchy tends to enforce its position or maintain its position through the application of force and threat. Everybody's meant to be scared of them. And are they? Well, um, if, if three, it's, it's three uh, well-known well uh, bad reputation prisoners were to approach you, say, if you was in, and you was in jail, and they would approach you with, with a couple of iron bars and, and a shiv or, or whatever, what would you do? You're on your own, what would you do? No, it doesn't go on your Nobody gets bashed. If we don't allow it to, uh, uh, to happen deliberately, we are aware that it is there. You've uh, got to prove conclusively that it's there if you want to take any uh, punitive action and bring people to face court, for example, if indeed there are charges. Corrective services isn't an easy portfolio. Society demands that criminals be locked away. But once inside, how hard should jail life be? The department tries to rehabilitate these men, but at the end of their sentence, there's no assurance that they'll leave jail better for it. When I do leave here, I hope that I can just close the book on the last seven years and walk out a, a stronger person than I was when I was out there in the community last night.